With their competitors far ahead, Apple is on track to spend up to a billion dollars this year trying to catch up on AI. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today we begin yet again with more leaks or at least internal reporting from Apple around what's going on with their AI strategy. Apple's lack of presence in the generative AI space has, of course, been one of the big themes and one of the big questions for many industry observers. But recently, we've been getting a few more hints about what may be coming down the pipeline. Over the summer, the information had a number of reports, including one that suggested that Apple was now spending millions of dollars per day training AI models. And we also got a little bit of information about what those AI models actually looked like internally. The TLDR on all that is that it seems like Apple had trained its own model and was experimenting with it, but that A, it didn't feel it was really differentiated from other products in the market, and B, they didn't know exactly how to integrate it with their devices. One of the big barriers for Apple is, of course, that they have a very privacy-first approach to data and so tend to like running software on-premise, on devices in other words, rather than in the cloud, which can be challenging with the size of these large language models. Well, at the end of last week, Reports from people who watch Apple's supply chain suggested that we might start to see AI integrated into Apple products by the end of 2024. And over the weekend, we got an even more authoritative report from Bloomberg. The piece was called Inside Apple's Big Plan to Bring Generative AI to All Its Devices. So a couple interesting things from this piece. First of all, it directly counteracts the narrative that Apple has been trying to push, that they've been working on this stuff for years, and that they're just doing their normal Apple thing of being best rather than first. As author Mike Gurman writes, CEO Tim Cook says that Apple has been working on generative AI technology for years, but I can tell you in no uncertain terms that Apple executives were caught off guard by the industry's sudden AI fever and have been scrambling since late last year to make up for lost time. A person with knowledge of the matter told him, there's a lot of anxiety about this and it's considered a pretty big miss internally. Now, I don't think that anyone who's listening to this show would have really thought otherwise. I think widely speaking, our assumption has been that Apple just hasn't quite known exactly what to do with this space, even if many of us out there have confidence that when they do figure it out, it will still be a major mainstreaming moment given their track record of strong consumerization of new technologies. Now, the people who are leading Apple's AI efforts internally are two SVPs focused on AI and software engineering, John Gianandria and Craig Federighi, and they're also apparently joined by Eddie Q, who is the head of services. One one splashy note from this report is that the group is spending around a billion dollars a year now on this effort. The report also gives some information about where AI might find its way into the Apple system. And again, it's not necessarily super surprising, but is confirmation of what many people assumed. Bloomberg writes, Gian Andrea is overseeing development of the underlying technology for a new AI system, and his team are revamping Siri in a way that will deeply implement it. What's more, it sounds like this development may be ready for implementation as soon as next year. This is felt to many like the lowest hanging fruit and most obvious place for Apple to make a bigger AI push, given that Siri as a personal assistant is already so central to the iOS operating system. Now, on top of that, the software engineering group is also starting to work to bring AI into the next version of iOS, which is, of course, what Mac rumors and others had reported at the end of last week. Writes Bloomberg, there's an edict to fill it with features running on the company's LLM, which uses a flood of data to hone AI capabilities. The new feature should improve how both Siri and the Messages app can field questions and autocomplete sentences. That same software engineering team is also trying to bring generative AI into developer tools in and around the Apple ecosystem. And it sounds like Q, who again is the head of services mandate, is to quote, add AI to as many apps as possible. That means things like auto-generated playlists in Apple Music, as well as integrations into productivity apps. Think auto-created slide decks in Keynote or helping people write in Pages. Finally, they're also looking to bring generative AI into customer service. Now, what's pretty stunning about this, and I'm sure that many of you are thinking this right now, is just how table stakes all of this is. Microsoft's Office Suite already has AI up and down it. Google's Workspace just had Bard integrated as well. No one's going to be impressed when Apple comes out with Pages Writing Assistance or Slide Deck Help in Keynote. Those features are going to be more than a year old and totally standard by the time that Apple gets there. Same with things like auto-generated playlists in Apple Music. Spotify just feels light years ahead of that. When it comes to developer tools, these are some of the front lines for the very vanguard of AI. So I can't imagine that Apple's going to get a lot of traction there. In other words, at best, they keep parity with other players, which really leaves Siri as the big opportunity, given that no one has really nailed that personal assistant experience yet. Now, the piece also confirms what we've already known in that this debate around how to deploy generative AI is a major barrier for them. Is it going to be completely on device? or is it going to be some hybrid approach? Bloomberg, for their part, is betting on the hybrid. Anyways, I think to sum this up, and obviously I took a little bit longer than I normally do on a brief, but I think it's worthwhile given just how big this question of Apple's role in the place looms large over the entire space. 
frankly, it feels to me like they have their work cut out for them. I guess that maybe at the end of the day, Apple's bet is that device integration, more than state-of-the-art AI capacities themselves, are going to be the thing that wins. And so all that matters is deeply integrating these tools across the suite of applications that people are already using on their iOS devices. And who knows, that might work. But it is strange to see Apple so absolutely far behind, and at least as of now, seemingly bereft of novel innovation. Of course, they could surprise us. These are just insider-type reports. But from where I'm sitting, Apple's playbook looks tough from here. Now, speaking of insider reports and leaks, let's hop over to the world of chips. The latest Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, is going to be announced at the end of this week and is likely to end up in the Samsung Galaxy S24. And surprise, surprise, as The Verge puts it, it's full of AI features. So this is obviously an interesting parallel with the Apple iOS story, given that we're talking about Samsung's mobile devices and how AI will come to them. But according to these leaks, the new chip will create the opportunity for a variety of AI applications to happen right on the phone, including a number of different camera tools, like the ability to remove objects from videos, generate fake backgrounds, which is something that we've seen other companies like YouTube talk about a lot, or expand areas of a photo, which of course has been a big hit on social media, as those features have come to Adobe, Midjourney, and other image generators. Now, perhaps more importantly and impressively, if it's true, the chip claims to be able to run AI models on premise. The models that it says it can handle include Stable Diffusion and Meta's Llama 2. This is powered by an upgraded Hexagon neural processor, which the documentation says is 98% faster than last year's model. There's also a bunch of updates that aren't exactly about AI, but very clearly that is the main focus. These chips will be in a number of different high-end Android phones. And so in addition to putting pressure on companies like Apple and their own AI phone plans, it also puts pressure on Google. Remember, Google's Pixel is not powered by Qualcomm's chips, but by their own Tensor processors. And so even within the world of Android, there is some seeming competition. Lastly today on The Brief, a twin set of articles that were right next to each other when I was searching and I think perfectly sum up how the world is handling and interacting with AI right now. Both of them have to do with AI applications for health, and the first one is incredibly positive and exciting. It's from NPR, and the article is called, With the help of AI, cardiologists can predict who will develop AFib. Now, for those who don't know, AFib is an irregular heart rhythm. It's very treatable, but can also have serious health consequences. Well, now a group of cardiologists have developed an algorithm to detect it up to a month before it happens. As with so many of AI's advances in the health field, it has to do with the ability of AI to identify patterns that humans just aren't able to. So there we go. There's the one positive article. But then on the flip side, from Axios, study some AI chatbots provide racist health info. So this is research from a group of Stanford doctors who ran a set of questions through four different AI chatbots, including ChatGPT and Google Bard, and the information had some problems. According to Axios, all four models used debunked race-based information when asked about kidney function and lung capacity based on old incorrect tropes about black patients having different muscle masses. Said one of the professors involved in the study, there are very real world consequences to getting this wrong that can impact health disparities. We're trying to have those tropes removed from medicine so the regurgitation of that is deeply concerning. Now, of course, this is a great example of the garbage in, garbage out principle. When chatbots are trained on information that is out of date and incorrect, there can be serious problems when it comes to applying that information to new and real scenarios. Now, of course, on the balance of being able to have massive medical innovations, like the ability to diagnose problems before they've begun, versus having these challenges with chatbot usage, obviously, I think the former outweighs the latter. However, that doesn't mean that the latter isn't something that has to be addressed, especially as these systems get put into practice. Anyways, I just thought it was fascinating that these two pieces showed up right next to each other and sort of perfectly summed up how diverse the coverage of AI is today. It's challenge and opportunity, friends. Challenge and opportunity. But we will wrap it there for that slightly longer than normal brief. Next up, the main AI breakdown.